everybody, it's Miss Liz from the Heights Town branch again, here with my friend Dudley Dragon. <laughs> Dudley, I can't understand you with fire in your mouth. Mm. <sighs> That's better. Yeah, yeah, better. All right, are we going to do one of those stories again? Yeah, we're going to read one of those older stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, from before I was even a baby. Mm hmm. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Either from maybe from when I was a kid or, or even older. We're going to see what we have today. Okay. Oh, I'll help you guess. I'll help you guess too, friends. Okay. All right. What should we have them guess? Well, it starts with this letter over here. Okay. This letter? What can you tell us about this letter, Dudley? This letter says. <sighs> <sighs> hmm. So it's a letter F for firefighter. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Or fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or fish. Yeah, yeah, fish. That's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. We're talking about fish today. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to make this really cool craft. Oh, let's see what this craft is, huh? Oh, we make our own little fish. It's a little hard to see from here, but we'll get it up close in a minute. Our own little fish, um, an ocean scene, using some craft supplies that we have around the house. Yeah, well, I need some help, you know, with my dragon claws. Right, okay, so if we're talking about fish, what book are we going to read today? Should I get it? Yeah. Okay, friends, we're reading The Fish Who Could Wish. So this book is actually what gave me the idea for the throwback story time. And this is a book that I remember being read to me. This is actually from my personal collection at home. <laughs> So unfortunately we don't have it in the library system, but I hope you'll like the reading that we have today. And then we'll do our craft, which uses um, cupcake liners and construction paper or regular paper, markers and glue, crayons, anything like that you have to color with, and scissors. The Fish Who Could Wish by John Bush and Corky Paul. Wonder what he's going to wish for. In the deep blue sea, in the deep of the blue, swim a fish who could wish, and each wish would come true. Oh, the fun that he had, oh, the things he would do, just wishing away in the deep water blue. Okay, oh, look at what he's wishing for. He wished for a castle. How many of you would wish for a castle? Be a great place to live. He wished for a car. Beep, beep. Pretty fancy car. He wished for a horse. Nay, and a Spanish guitar. And he's singing. <laughs> Never heard of a singing fish before. Once, he, when he wished he could go out and ski, it snowed for a week under the sea. I don't know about that one. That's pretty silly. And here we've got a snowman with a mask on and snorkel and a fishing pole. He wished he could fly and to his delight flew twice around the world in exactly one night. If sharks came a hunting, oh look at those teeth, for a nice fishy treat, he'd quickly just wish he was too small to eat. They're not going to notice him down there. And to teach sharks a lesson, do you know what he'd wish? That he was the shark and the shark was the fish. Oh. I bet the shark didn't like that at all. Maybe he stopped chasing fish. He'd wish himself square or round as a biscuit, triangular, oval, name it, he wished it. So here he is as another kind of triangle. What's this shape? Star, right? He wished for fine suits and handsome silk ties. But the one thing he never wished 
was to be wise, was to be able to think, think about things. Hmm. So here he is with his castle, his horse, his car, his fancy suit. One day, just for fun, that silly old fish wished the silliest, silliest wish he could wish. What do you think he's going to wish? Let's find out. That silly old fish wished he could be just like all the other fish in the sea. So he wanted to be just like all the other fish. And those other fish didn't have the special wishing power. But wishing was something other fish could not do. So that was his very last wish that came true. And that's it. Now he's just a regular fish. So he wished for all these things. He got them, they all came true. And in the end, he wished to be regular just like every other fish. And every other fish didn't have that special magical wishing power that he did. So he became regular and didn't have that special wishing power either. Silly fish. It's a silly story. Especially because I don't know about fish who wear suits or drive cars in the ocean. But it's a good story that I remember being read to me when I was a kid and I thought I'd share it with you because I thought you'd like it too. It's time to look at the part of our history at the Heightstown Memorial Branch and that goes along with when Fish That Could Wish was published. So that was published in 1991. That's a lot more recently than uh, some of the other one books I've shared with you in some of the other videos. So 1991 might be a time when your parents were uh, either at story times or maybe in school. <laughs> bring you in for a closer look story time decorations in the background it's a children's program and then down here looks like a story time craft also something that we still do today well now we're doing it virtually but hopefully we'll be together in person again soon for our craft, I figured we'd make a little ocean scene with some fish. So to make our fish bodies, we're going to need cupcake wrappers and we're going to flatten them out to make them nice round circle bodies. You're gonna need crayons or markers to color on if you don't have colored cupcake wrappers, depends on what you have at home. Um, you're gonna need some kind of construction paper or regular paper to make the tails of the fish. Of course, you'll need glue, scissors. You want kid scissors. Uh, you definitely still want a grown-up to be with you for using them. Or you might want to have a grown-up just cut the things that need to be cut. You're going to need a piece of paper for your ocean scene. Either blue construction paper or you can use white paper and color it. Whatever you have at home. And if you have any stickers, maybe, or anything else you want to use to decorate your ocean scene, I happen to have a few here. So I'm going to start by clearing my workspace just a tad. Ooh. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take my first cupcake wrapper, flatten it the best I can, and then get the glue out. We'll glue it onto our construction paper. It's going to be our ocean. glue. Alright, so this is going to be my fish's body. And then I'm going to want to take my construction paper or whatever other kind of paper you have to make the tail and make a tail. I'm just going to cut a nice triangle shape. I need to glue that. You can decide 
how big you want to make that or even if you want a triangle shape i mean in our book our fish was all different shapes at one point right he was like a triangle a star an oval all right now the fun part we'll do some coloring so we're gonna do some orange because that was the color of our fish but i think i'm gonna mix it up give them a little bit of blue some yellow make them a multicolor fish why not not quite a rainbow fish because that's another book <laughs> i'm not going for that exactly today but give them a good variety of colors let's see if we can squeeze some green in here too all right and now i'm going to track down a black if possible to make his eye or her eye could very well be a girlfish right all right well i'm giving him a nice blue eye and some fish lips right there gotta give him some bubbles in the ocean and you know what just like our fish from the book who had a bunch of spiked fins on top i think my fish is missing something i might give him a little fin on top maybe a smaller triangle or a couple small triangles because now he looks like a unicorn or a narwhal <laughs> so let's do a few here stuck to me of course and then we'll give him a nice fin here in his middle of his body right he needs that fin to be able to swim so let's get that there we go glue those so it's amazing sometimes what you can make at home using things that you have at home and your imagination. Now my fish looks like he's uh, got a little mohawk, a little rock band fish here. <laughs> All right, and of course you can always draw some details on your fish. Maybe if you want to draw or put a picture of something that he's wishing for somewhere over here, right? I think my fish personally is going to wish for lots and lots of books. I don't know how well these books are going to do underwater, but I think she's going to wish for some books. So we'll draw her a nice book over here. Make our some lines here to be our pages. And let's see, maybe it would be Little Mermaid. Always a good story to read under the sea, right? So there's her book that she wished for. And since I've got some cool stickers, I might put a few on here, a couple of shelves to decorate it. You guys, of course, use whatever you have at home. Sea star as well, put one down there. And there we go, using a cupcake wrapper and some paper, scissors, glue, crayons. You have an ocean scene with a fish and what they wish for. What would you wish for? So I hope you enjoyed The Fish Who Could Wish. It's a fun book. We've got other fish themed books in our collection. I like this one, Swallow the Leader, a counting book. So the smaller fish get swallowed up. <laughs> That's by Dana Smith. 
we've got Henny, Penny, Lenny, Denny, and Mike <laughs> by Cynthia Ryland. So of course, most of the fish, their names rhyme with each other. And then there's Mike. Hmm. We've got many in the series from the Pout Pout Fish. And uh, that is by Deborah Deason. So this particular one is the Pout Pout Fish. Pout Pout Fish. Oh, it's almost a tongue twister. <laughs> the Pout Pout Fish Far Far From Home. And there's other ones about him cleaning up the ocean, afraid of the dark. There's, of course, the original Pout Pout Fish. There's a nice big one with bright, colorful illustrations called Hooray for Fish by Lucy Cousins. She's the author and illustrator of the Maisie series about Maisie the White Mouse. Does a lot of those first experience books. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, and who could forget, The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. 